Some people build a race car because they want to race it. I built a race car because I want to race it and I want to learn stuff. I want to try things I would never do to my street car and today is one of those days. Do I need to do this? Absolutely not, but I'm going to do it anyway. So today on the Nugget Project we are going to get rid of our boot lock and put in an electronic boot release because race car. Okay, so why the hell am I putting electronic boot release in this car? Um, to get into the boot of the XL, you've got two options. You've got your release inside the car, which I've moved to the passenger seat, which I had to do when I put in the, the race seat because we hacked up the floor. So we've now got that release there. Um, the other option is to put a key in the boot. Thus, um, a lot of the guys, what they do is they leave their spare key in the boot and then wire it to the spoiler or something like that. Um, yeah, that works, but I think it's ugly as hell and I'm not a big fan of ugly, which is hilarious since I drive an XL. Um, but anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to replace this. So instead of a lock, that is going to be a button. And what that will do is trigger a central locking release, which will pull the pin up and release the boot. Pretty cool. Why do I need to get into the boot? Well, I found at track days, whenever I come into pits, I pretty much always pop the boot up. Uh, a couple of reasons. One, it's a really nice place to sit in when you're chatting to people. Uh, number two, it cools the car down. It's a big open area in the back and the car gets really hot inside. So when you come in, open the doors, open the boot, lots of air, all that sort of stuff. Um, and I also store things in the boot. So when it's on the trail, I put the, you know, chairs, uh, toe plates, all the spare junk in the back of the car. So it's good to be able to access it easily. Um, so how are we going to do all this? Let's pop the boot. So this is what I have to do every time. It's not a big deal. I just don't want to do it anymore. So, with the tailgate open, it's actually going to be a simple process. We're going to replace that lock with this little guy. This is a waterproof stainless steel momentary push button. So what momentary means is it's not like on and off. Like once you're holding it, it's on. When you let go, it's off. Um, you see buttons like this, like, oh, I think I've got some in the cabin. No, they're on my Sora. But you push it and it stays down and that's on. Push it again, it's off. So this is momentary, okay? Um, yeah, and that's waterproof, so it'll all be good in the back. To make it fit in that boot lock, um, I put a little shout out on the page and said, hey, can one of you measure the hole for the boot lock? One of the legends got back to me and I've just printed up these little adapters. That will mean that lock fits in perfectly. And I've also got a wiring loom um, to make it a bit neater so we don't have to sort of get on the back of that. To make the mechanism work, I got these guys. Oh god. So this is just a generic, come on screen, a generic central locking little, um, it's got a motor in there and it just pulls the actuator in or out. Um, these are so cheap and they're so light, there is nothing of this. So you're going, oh, why are you putting weight in the car? This probably weighs less than the actual boot lock, there's nothing to it, it's really light. Um, and these work both ways. So if you put the negative on the blue wire and a positive on the green wire, I think it pulls in. If you do it the other way around, it pushes out. So when you wire this into your normal central locking, you can lock or unlock. For us, we just need it to pull. And we just need it to pull this pin. Where is it? Oh God. There we go. Okay guys, so when you put the key in the lock and twist it, it pulls this do the lucky up which then releases the boot so we just need to put that in place of that easy right so what about security now obviously the XL is not the most secure car in the world but what I want to do is be able to lock the car up so when it's on the trailer and I've got some bags and stuff in here opportunistic thieves don't come along just open the door and nick stuff um, so we still want to be able to lock it so the doors the front doors still lock and I always turn the power off in the main switch. So when I turn the power off, obviously that'll disable the push button. So you won't be able to open it up. Yeah, if somebody's got half a brain, they're easily going to get into an XL. But it just stops uh, Joe Muppet walking along, opening the door and stealing my junk. Cool. So now we need to get power to this cable, to the back here. So what I'm going to do is this cable here is the old cable that connects up the rear windscreen wiper. Obviously, we don't have a rear windscreen wiper anymore. So... Let's utilize that because it's already there. So say running a new cable all the way down, we may as well just tap into this. So how do I figure out which one's which? You'll see I've already marked it. So I've already done this. But I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. The biggest thing I get messaged all the time is, how do I know which cable's which? 
I'm going to show you, and then you can stop messaging me. I love the messages. Just don't message the same damn thing every week. Okay, these are little alligator clips. You can get these from JCAR, eBay, anything like that. A couple of bucks. So, what I'm going to do, excuse the camera work while I just hook this up. I'm going to put a pin in this end connector. Okay, so the question I get probably the most is how do I find which cable is which? Because after I did my ignition start button stuff, um, people still don't get how to use multimeters, even though I showed you. So I'm going to show you this. It's very simple. Here we go. So I want to find this green cable with the red tracer. I want to know if that's the same one that I found down in the cabin. So what I've done is I've got the power off. I've put a pin in that and I've earthed it. Okay, so that's now connected to earth that cable. Down this end, I found that cable. It's here, okay? We have our multimeter, and I have earthed one of the points of the multimeter onto my handbrake, which I know is earthed. And we've set it to resistance. So, now, because that's connected to earth, if I connect this to earth here, we'll have a look. Zero, zero resistance. Take it off. There's resistance, okay? So that means it's a circuit. Now, if we go down to our green cable, and I poke that, oh, let me show you the multimeter. There's nothing, and I poke that green cable. There we go, it's a circuit. So that means that is earth both ends. Now we need to make sure that wasn't an earth to start with. So I'm 99% sure it wasn't, so we go back. And we'll disconnect that, so now that is just the cable connected to whatever it was back in the day. Get our probe, and I'm going to probe that cable again. You see our multimeter isn't responding at all. So we now know that is the same cable as the back. All we're doing is just finding out if that is the same cable, so we're just tracking it. You can do it with power or whatever. Um, so I know that's for the rear windscreen wiper, which we're not using anymore, so we may as well utilize it. Save um, running another cable and, you know, waste not one lot and all that. So I will trace that up here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect that up just to a mains power supply in here. I won't bore you with those details, but I have a few from when I did my start button. So we're going to connect that up, and then we'll get our button all sorted out. So I'll do that now. Okay, so we've now got power to this plug onto that wire, so that is good to go. It all runs down. It's all neatened up and all done nicely. So what's the next thing we need to do? I want to get rid of this boot lock. I don't know how the hell I'm going to film this and do it, but we'll give it a crack. Um, the easy bit is we just have to pop that clip off the rod and pop the rod out. So this is the rod that we're going to use to trigger the boot. So all that does is just pull the lever. It doesn't take much force, so we're not going to be putting a lot of strain through the mechanism, but that's all it does. So let's get this uh, old boot latch out and we'll put the button in. Let's fiddle it up. I might put a dob of silicon around it after it's in, just to seal it up. But we put our, um, our switch in the housing. There we go. Pop it through the hole. And then I've got the, I made a washer for the back. And then we just got the nut that comes with the switch. Sweet, there's our switch in. We'll have a look at the outside. Oh, that's nice. Open boot, open boot. Cool. So, what I also have here is my wiring loom. And, because I plan ahead, I've written down what color wire does what. So, cool little thing about this switch, if it works, who knows, it's from me though. Um, it's got a little red ring around, so you can get it different colors, but I've got a red one. So, because the back of the car, the lights are red, I'm going to wire that in. So when you turn on the um, the lights on the car, we'll have a little red ring so we can see it at night. Lovely. So we'll wire that in too. 
Let's do it. Okay, so I've got to figure out where to put this sucker. So, I know it's got to be in line more or less with our lever here. So, that's in line there. Let's turn it around, face it this way. It's a bit tight, but it's not too bad. Cool, so we've now got that screwed in, just put a couple of little plastic standoffs in and we just need to attach this rod to there. Okay gang, I've had a rethink. So looking at the mechanism, even though the original one pulls that way, the this is the lock here. Sorry, I know it's dark. Just bear with me. Um, so the lock doesn't actually like to pull straight, it likes to pull sideways, right? You only have to put a little bit of pressure on it and it releases. So it's better off pulling that way. So I'm gonna relocate this sideways and I think it'll uh, release a lot better. So we'll redo that and then we can attach the bar, wire it up, should all work. Okay, so I've now got the actuator in there and I've set the boot to lock so I know where the lock position is. The actuator is kind of where I need it to be. So now I need to mark where I need to bend the bar. Sorry gang, I got carried away and started doing stuff, forgot to film. You know how it is. Okay, so there's our switch up there and we've now wired in all our bits. So I'll just run you through the wiring very quickly. So this is the wire to the actuator. That's the actuator wire that goes to the positive side of the switch. Uh, we've got our power going into the switch. And then this one is just an earth. It goes to our earth point there. And then we've got that one is the earth to the actuator. So the actuator needs an earth and a power, okay. Um, and then the last ones we've got is just this uh, this wire here, which is going to go to the um, tail lights. So we're going to turn the tail lights on and switch close. Um, but so we've moved the actuator here. Sorry about the darkness, guys. I really should try and find a light. Um, so I put the actuator there, and it's just because um, the plastic housing is is nice and big. We've just got some self tappers and some spaces. But uh, if I if you can see that. So when I push the uh, the button on the boot, that pulls the lever, which pulls the boot release. Easy peasy, and just to prove that it does work, I'll just move my cake so I don't squash it. Um, there's our button. Locked, shut, open. How good's that? I am pretty stoked with that. So now all I need to do is just run a wire for the lights. What I might do though is just bridge that real quick and see, oh, I'm just, here's my cake. That's nice, huh? Chocolate chip, very good. I'll give you a review later. Um, all I need to do is just, I might just bridge that real quick with the positive and just make sure the light does light up before I get too excited. And then, uh, uh, yeah, and then I run a cable to the lights. Awesome. Sweet, so we've got, uh, this is the plug for the number plate light. And so all I've done is just tap that wire into the number plate light. Now if we uh, shut our tail gaze, and so there's our button. Turn our lights on. And we have a nice little glowing red switch. <laughs> I mean, if it's on the back of the car, might as well glow. And then we've got our fog light, our FIA approved fog light from Lux Performance. 
so many red lights. That's really cool. And then at night we can go, oh, I need to open the boot. Boot is open. All I gotta do now is just clean up these cables, give them a cable tie, wrap them all up, and we're done. And there we go, gang. We have an electronic boot release that works great. Pretty happy with that. Now, did I need to do that? No. Do I want to do it? Yes, because I now learned how to fit a, an electronic actuator, how they work, uh, wired in a different type of switch I've never done, so it's all just for fun. And also, it's kind of a cool thing, because as I said, I always have to reach in the car to pop the boot, and now I don't have to do that, so that's really cool. Uh, one other thing while I've got you, I am now doing these. So I bit the bullet, something I've been wanting to do for a long time is get a vinyl plotter, a cutter, for ages. Um, I figured it would be something, there's lots of little stickers I wanted to make for the car. And so screw it, I, I saved up all the cash I've been making from uh, 3D printer parts and I bit the bullet and I bought a cutter. So now I'm making these. Um, Cam's regs, you have to have your last name in your back window. There have to be a certain shape and size and all that sort of stuff. So I'm now uh, making those for people. So if you need your name for your car, give me a yell. Also, I'm making numbers for the windscreen. Now I'm well aware this is not the right color. It's supposed to be Dayglow Yellow, but I do have Dayglow Yellow. I just didn't have it at the time when I was cutting those. So if you want the number for the funny car or names for the backy car or any other vinyl stuff cut, give us a yell and I'll see what I can do for you. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, gang. We I have another cool project coming up soon, and we've got a track day coming up. Um, there is the first pre-COVID round, post-COVID round of uh, the XLs. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to enter. I just I need to get the car logbooked, uh, weighed. I need to get a fire extinguisher for the pits. All these other things that I just don't have the cash for. I mean, this little job, the actuators cost me like 12 bucks, and the switch was like five bucks. So it's like very cheap little thing. Um, I just don't have the money to be doing the other things at the moment. So once again, I'm in no rush. I will get out on track this year for a race. I, I'm i trying. Um, just, yeah, time and money don't allow for that at the moment. But we'll do a track day. I'm going to go and uh, have a race, have a track day at um, Broadford, which is the motorcycle complex in Australia. And it's really cool, cool little track. So uh, somewhere new and somewhere that a lot of people haven't seen. So we'll get some cool video of that and I'll show you around. Anyway, thanks for watching guys and we'll see you very soon.